For a while now, you have requested to get a video where I explain some game mechanics, tips and tricks about the game and more. And well, today I will do that and it will start off rather slowly and then we get to the more juicy stuff where I'm pretty sure a lot of people don't know it. In the video I will reference some videos that I made and I will link them in the pinned comment. So I will not cover them entirely in this video just because the other video is dedicated to it. Number 1. The gold limit that is shown is one shy of 1 million but the game keeps track of everything that you have. I constantly get this question why my gold doesn't decrease, what cheat I'm using, what hack I'm using. No, there's no hack, there's no cheat, there's just 400 plus hours of game time and well a lot of gold farming. Number 2. To evolve a weapon you have to max out the weapon and get whatever synergizes with the weapon. So for example to evolve Song of Mana it has to be level 8 and it needs any level of Skullomaniac. In front of you you can see all the combinations and as you can see not all of them need a passive weapon, the bottom line, some of them like Vandalier combine out of multiple weapons. Vandalier and Firachi are the only two known weapons that are out of line here as most other weapons need an active weapon and a passive weapon to evolve. Talking about weapons, all the weapons in the game have a weight that determines how likely they are to appear when you have a level up and the game chooses your three options. The higher the value, the more likely it is to appear and as you can see, currently there are three super rare weapons in the game, the Bone, the Jerry Bomb and the Corello all sitting at 1. That means you are 100 times more likely to get the whip than you are to get the Bone. And over here we have the passive weapons or the so called items, where most of them are in the 90 to 100 area and a few of them are really rare. I can't confirm this because I haven't found something but since a recent patch it feels like weapons that have synergy. So for example for fire wand you need spinach to evolve it. If you have either spinach or fire wand the other one is a lot more likely to show up. As of right now, and I recommend checking the date of the video, there are 22 characters in the game, 5 of them are hidden or secrets. The 4 secret characters are X-Dash, Red Death, Leda and Toasty. The hidden character is missing though, some of you might remember that that played for a while and while he was more or less removed, he was still in the code and you can still unlock him. For all of those characters except for X-Dash I do have a video guide in the pinned comment. Now to unlock Red Death you have to kill the Reaper but how strong is the Reaper? Well, for every single level that you have he has 650,000 HP. So at level 100 if you get to the Reaper there then he has 65 million. That is usually more than what most people achieve in one game in total damage combined while they deal huge AOE damage to thousands of enemies at once so yeah the chance to kill him at that point is pretty pretty impossible. He also has a speed of 1200 and an attack of 65000. Fun fact here, Toasty at level 200 gains 65000 armor roughly in that ballpark without additional armor the death would still deal 15 damage per hit. But if you have the power up and the armor from the game, so a total of 8, he only deals 7 per hit. Sadly you can't just use bloody teal to outlast that, simply because the reaper attacks way too fast and once there are more that spawn they just deal like 35 to 70 damage a second, you can't heal that off. Another very interesting feature of the reaper is that he has negative knockback, so instead of pushing him away with knockback you actually do pull him in. It's very subtle and it rather ends in a stutter walking that he does but it leads to some very interesting scenarios where for example I survive for 175 minutes by stuttering him the entire time with Ferracci and Labora. Number 5. The game currently has 2 to 3 hidden codes depending on how you view it. The very first one is to unlock Motaccio and 2800 gold. You have to press up up down down left right left right escape and enter in the main menu. So where you can make all the selections if you want to play, if you want to go for the unlocks, if you want to go for power ups etc. The next one, same menu, is X dash, it's a bit too complicated to read that, it's just X dash X1 VIIQ. But this one might be very hard depending on what type of keyboard you have, like what type of input. So you might have to use the Windows keyboard to do this. 
And the last one where it's a bit questionable is for Toasty, where you only have to press down and enter. I don't really view this as a hidden code, it's more like a sequence that you have to do of multiple events, like you need to unlock X-Dash, you need to kill the Stalker in the right way, and then you have a very short time window to unlock Toasty with these two inputs. So it's not really a code on its own, right? It's just like one further step that you need. And the sixth one is Gold by Order. This update brought a couple new power-ups or additional power-ups, and the order is Revival or Reroll, just do either, it doesn't matter in which order, but make sure that you get all of them at once, so if you have multiple rerolls, get all of them at once, don't mix and match them with Revival. Then Curse, Amount, Growth, Cooldown, Armor and Luck, Armor and Luck again the same, just max out one, then go to the other, but don't mix them. Then all the ones that have five parts, there are three of them. Then the other ones that only have two parts, Next up we have max HP, and lastly skip and banish again, doesn't matter which one you do first or last, and that ends up to a total of 232k. Number 7, and this will be a bit complicated to understand, there is a level up limitation on weapons on what you can get, but the game overall has a lot of things that it does when it checks for what it offers to you. So you might have seen some of my videos where I got two garlics in a row in the very beginning, and I'll explain it later on, because there's luck and other things that apply to this, but overall this is what the base game tries to do. If you don't have the level requirements, you can't get a level up for a weapon that you own. Next up we have luck, but just a short second, this video took me over 15 hours to make, to make a list of the points that I actually want to include, the research behind that, the footage recording, getting all the images out of the game files, and of course the editing of the video. This is pretty much the first video that exceeded the amount of lines that I can show in my editing software, so if you enjoyed the video, please just consider giving it a like and giving me a chance. I'm not asking you to subscribe, I'm just asking you that you check out one or two other videos and just see, is this something you can wipe with, or it was one video that you took something out of, but the rest, nah, that's nothing. That's all I'm asking for. Enjoy the rest of the video. Number 8, and this will be a long one. Luck. Just as a general understanding, luck pretty much affects all the chances that exist in the game. Everything that you could think of and not think of. So, some examples on weapons. We talk about Pentagram, the chance to not array something, crits on Bloody Tear and Heaven Sword, as well as the explosion on Cherry Bomb. As a fun fact, the 65% Pentagram, so level 7 and beyond, needs a total of 60% luck to never erase. Most of the modes end up on 40-50% to luck if you play on Hyper, which only gives a chance of 91% and 97.5% to not erase. The only reason why I'm saying only is because somehow, even with 97.5%, Pentagram manages to erase the moment a boss appears and the chest is just gone. So, get going and break those candles in hopes for the little clovers, each one of those increases it by 10%, and with two of them, you're guaranteed that Pentagram can't erase stuff. And while we are talking about Pentagram, I want to give two fun facts in one. The first one being Pentagram and Moon do not have damage on their own. The 666 that you see in the game with the variation of plus minus 5 is just visual. The actual damage that it deals is a skill which always deals max health damage to the enemy. No matter how much health they have, always max health. So for you that means if you strike an enemy with it and the enemy doesn't die, they are immune to this skill. And the second fun fact belonging to this, most but not all of the enemies scale with your level. They have a base HP, for example the wave 29 on the library has 5 health, which is then multiplied with your current level, as well as other buffs like the curse. Luck also affects chest drops and chest quality. By chest drops I mean that certain bosses have a chance to not drop a chest, and this makes it more likely. And chest quality is simply how good the chest is. Is it a single chest, is it a triple chest, is it a penta chest? And now the subcategory level ups of luck, what I mentioned at point 7 with the level up limitations. Well, first of all it influences the fourth level up choice. The game itself says that, right, so this is not really hard to figure out, but the chance to get an existing weapon as level up choice. This is where it becomes choosy and weird. So this pretty much overrides whatever the game decided to give you on level ups. And if you have an even level, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 and so on, 
there is a 60% chance and influence by luck. And if it's uneven, so 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, it's 30%, also multiplied by luck. And the way the game calculates it, it takes 1 and it subtracts 1 divided by luck. So just to make a very short example, if you have 100% luck, that is your bonus luck, so it's added on top of the base 100% that every character has. 200% is equal to 2, you take the 1 divided by 2, 0.5, you subtract the 0.5 from the 1 and you end up with 0.5, which leads to a total of 110% that you get one offered on even levels and 80% that you get one offered on uneven levels. With 200% luck you do the same calculation again, you have the plus 1 minus 1 divided by luck. So if we do it this time, we have the 1 divided by luck with 200% that's 3, so 0.33 and that results in 0.67 or 67%. On uneven levels we now have a 97% chance to receive a level up for a weapon that we already own. And if you're curious when it's always 100%, it has been a while for even level ups but not for uneven level ups, you require 230% of luck. This will lead to exactly 70% plus the 30%, it's just the base value, is a total of 100%. Oh boy, and now we get to breakables. Okay, this one is a bit more complicated, so I have to break the maps apart. There are maps that have set spawn points, like the library, the dairy blend, and the gallow tower, the new one, right, where they can only spawn in very specific locations. In Mad Forest and Green Acres, however, they can just spawn around you in a circular shape. For now, let's just focus on the library, though the same logic applies to Dairy Blend and Gallow Tower. Luck affects how likely it is that something spawns, and the way the game does it is, every single second, it takes a chance, I think it's 0.3, if I don't remember it wrong, multiplies that with luck, and if that succeeds, if a random roll of a number is lower than that, then it spawns a candle. The candle is just spawned out of your vision range, but within the tile set. If you don't know what a tile set is, this is pretty much a thing that is constantly repeated. Whenever you walk to the left or up or down or right, it's always repeated, it's always the same stuff. And that is one tile set, so in your current tile set, it spawns them around you outside of your vision range. And with more luck, the more likely it becomes at a cap of 500% luck. So, now that you understood that, let's make it even more complicated. I think the limit for breakables is 10. I know it is for library, for others it might be different, but I think it's a global variable, so it applies to all the maps. And once you have 10 candles, 10 breakables around you, and it would spawn another one, it will spawn it, but it destroys another one. And this candle can spawn anywhere, but it's not influenced by luck. This is just a set one, so overall the speed of candle creation goes down a lot just because it's way less likely. But this is the reason why you can have candles spawn next to you. Even if you break a candle, in that very moment a candle might appear in the same spot again. Talking about candle appearing in the same spot, did you know that candles can stack on top of each other? Yes. I think the maximum I've ever seen were 5. I broke one candle and 5 drops came out of them. No, candles cannot have multi-drops, it always drops one thing. So if you see multiple things that come out of a candle, I don't mean they already were on the ground, I mean there was nothing, you break them, five things come out, yes, then those were multiple candles in a single spot. And to finish off the breakables in the game, so the candles, breakers, stuff like this, the drop quality is also influenced. So the more luck you have, the better stuff you'll get out of this. I do remember two numbers, and one is the highest chance to get the rare stuff, so the really good stuff, is 32% at 200% luck. But don't take these two numbers too serious. I tried to find them out, I, I couldn't confirm it. I do trust the person that said that. The problem is it was very long ago, right? So a lot might have changed in the game or maybe it's influenced by even more things. The code is very complicated for the game. And the last two things that luck affects are map-defined items. So if you, for example, play Antonio without any luck, then most of the times you'll see one, two, three empty tomes in the library. The game will always give you at least one, so if all fail, it will just put one down. But when you play a high luck character, this one to three average, around two, I would say, is rather the two to four average, around three. And lastly, bad events. 
Bad events are just things where something happens to you, like the bad swarms that spawn on the mad forest, like the stalker, and the more luck you have, the less likely they become. So if you want to unlock Toasty, make sure you have as little luck as possible as it just decreases the chance of the stalker to spawn. And a little luck fun fact at the end, the character that can achieve the most luck without picking up little clovers is Toasty on Ilmolise on Hyper, having 100% luck as a base stat, 20% every 10 levels 5 times until 50, so another 100%, 30% from the power ups, 20% from Ilmolise being played on Hyper mode, so a total of 250 and another 50 if you get the clover as a passive weapon. As I said, this can be further extended if you pick up the little clovers that drops out of the breakables. And that is pretty much the maximum that you can get. The next one that gets kinda close to it is X Dash at 250. All is the same except that instead of getting 20% luck per 10 levels, he only gets 10% luck per 10 levels. And the last one where he gets that is also level 50. Phew, there was a lot of information for point number 8, but I think we can top that with point number 9. Stage, secrets, information and mechanics. We go through them from top to bottom just as they are in the game and we start off with Mad Forest. On Mad Forest to evolve a weapon a boss has to spawn at 10 minutes or after or the minute one bat. That bat has only a 30% chance to drop a chest so it's quite unlikely but this is also multiplied with luck and if you get that drop just keep it on the floor, max out a weapon that you can evolve, pick it up and you can do it as you can see it here with Song of Mana. As a little side note because a lot of people are confused by this, no there is no internal check in the game that says you have to reach minute 10 to evolve. It's all bound to the bosses and the chests that the bosses drop. The library itself is also 10 minutes forward, no secret chest, but it's special because you use this place to kill the death and unlock red death. It uses the feared rune tracer clergy strategy where you have an insanely large rune tracer that keeps you safe combined with the center water and then you use the objects on the map to cause the rune tracer bounce like crazy while the reaper is frozen around you. You pretty much deal 1.3 million damage in around 30 to 40 seconds if it's properly done and if he cooperates. So yeah, that's quite a busted strategy. Next up we have the dairy blend. Every single chest on this stage can evolve. And one is a bit more complicated than all the others, which is the chest from the stalker. If you want to have the chest from the stalker, you kill him with a rosary or the moon. And the alternative is the card, not, not the weapon. I mean the card that is on the stage. Pandagram scares him off, but it doesn't drop a chest. It also doesn't work for the toasty unlock. As a reminder, as I previously said, luck makes it less likely that a stalker spawns, so make sure you have as little luck as possible if you want to make this happen. Otherwise you just make it ridiculously harder to unlock Toasty. Now to a bit of a confusing part. Technically speaking, in the code, the stalker should be able to triple evolve your weapons. If you kill him with a rosary and a moon, you have a 6% chance to get a penta chest, a 66% chance to get a triple chest, and a 100% chance to get a single chest, all multiplied with luck. So if you have 60% luck, you would be guaranteed a triple chest, and with cards, it's a 3% chance for a penta chest, 10% chance for a triple chest, and 100% chance for a basic chest. But this doesn't work. Why? I have no idea. It's in the code. The separation also makes sense with the Rosary Moon and the card, that the card is slower, but it, it always gives a single chest. I have no idea why, I think it's a bug, so let's be a bit cautious with this one. Just for you to know, right now he only drops a single chest always, but I think this is just a bug and it will be fixed in the future. The newest stage, Gallo Tower, is also 10 minutes onwards, so no pre-10 minute evolution. And it has a secret character which is Leda who starts with Holy Wand as his starting weapon and 100% might, as well as some other bonuses and penalties. The Dairy Blends had a green death called Stalker and here we have the blue death called Drowner. Now, the Drowner has a couple of interesting things. First of all, you need to understand that there are two Drowners that can appear. The first one is spawned when the grab appears at 25 minutes. 
Every 6 seconds in the game, it checks if you're below the crab, position wise, and if you are, then it just spawns the drowner in. That drowner at 25 minutes can be killed using the moon or a rosary. And now it gets a bit more complicated, just like with the stalker, it's supposed to multi-evolve your weapons, but it can only drop a single chest. Again, I assume that is just, you know, a bug in the code that is not supposed to be like this and it might be fixed in the future. But talking about multi-evolutions, the 20 minute boss, the dragon, will triple evolve if you get a triple chest and you of course have all the weapons to evolve as well as the synergy weapons. And the crab can give a penta evolve. So if you're lucky enough to get a penta chest and you have 5 weapons that you can evolve in this moment, it will evolve all of them. Now we have the two bonus stages. I will start with Ilmolise. This one is very exciting. Uh, it has three chest drops and all of them can multi-evolve five times. So you could evolve a total of 15 weapons on this map. Not that that is actually possible, but it would be possible in theory. And one unique feature is that it ends at 15 minutes, at least that the Reaper spawns. But after 15 minutes, Gold Pot spawn for five minutes until 20 minutes. Then it has a one minute break. And from minute 21 to 22, it spawns a ton of gold pots. Currently, the record in gold earned in a run like this is 40,000. I have that video also linked in the pinned comment. But one thing you need to know is if you want to get gold from revivals. As you know, in the game, if you die, you get bonus gold. Then you have to survive until 30 minutes and die afterwards. Otherwise, it will just count as a usual death and you won't get anything. And the last bonus stage is Green Acres, which just has a bonus health increase to the enemies and it will randomly spawn a wave from any of the four stages. And to round out the stage topic, all of the stages, so not the bonus stages, just the stages, pick up items on the floor. For example, on the library, as we saw, we have Empty Tome and we also have Stone Mask. And if you pick them up after you already have six passive weapons, you will pick them up as additional passive weapons. So on the library, you can have a maximum of eight instead of the six that the game offers. On Gallo Tower, that is the same, having the Brazer and the Spellbinder. On Dairy Blend, you can get an additional four, so 10 total passive weapons, being the Wings, Armor, Attract Orb, and Candle Labrador. And on Mad Forest, a total of 5, being the Skullomaniac, Clover, Pumarola, Hollow Heart, and Spinach. Note, because this always gets asked, no, if you have something maxed out, it will not go to level 6. If you pick it up while something is already level 5, it will show you a level 6, but you notice it doesn't work because it has no description text of what it would do. And if you press escape to check your stats, you'll see nothing has changed. And lastly, what I have been using to make this video, as the point was to show off certain mechanics and not to actually play the game, the debug mode. The debug mode pretty much allows you to do anything, whatever you want to do in the game, to test out things. You can even zoom out using the mouse scroll wheel, which is amazing to understand how enemies spawn and how they get killed off screen or what weapons can't kill off screen. And to be honest, this is a bit too long to explain. I will just link my Red Death modding tutorial if you don't want to kill him to get Red Death, the Reaper, but instead just mod it. I explain there how to get to debug mode. In short, you have to format the file, then you search for your current version that you see in the main menu, and around three to four lines above that, you'll see a const equals something 0x1. And you just change that 0x1 to a 0x0 and it's done. You have debug mode enabled. I usually take a screenshot of all the hotkeys that you can use. Then I know them in the game and then I try out stuff. Was there something in there you didn't know? Let me please know. And if you have something else that you could think of, let me know and I might do a version 2 where I include these. If you want to see more Vampire Survivors content and especially a lot of modding that I do, then feel free to subscribe and you'll not be disappointed. Hopefully. Well, if you are, you can just unsubscribe again. <laughs>